Welcome to the College Fairs of Greater Denver. We're so excited to have you participating in this event. We have some fantastic schools here with us today. My name is Matt and I will be your facilitator. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. Your camera and microphone are off so the panelists cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. The presentation is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com slash Greater Denver. And now I'd like to turn things over to our first presenter, the University of Alaska Southeast. My name is Danielle Carlson. I am the Rural Admissions Counselor for the University of Alaska Southeast in Juneau. Um, I also, for some reason, work with Colorado. Uh, mostly just because I enjoy traveling there. I'm bummed I can't be there in person to see you all, but I'm glad that you have decided to join us virtually. I'm going to attempt to share my screen and show you guys some pretty photos. Um, the University of Alaska Southeast is technically in Juneau, Sitka, and Ketchikan. Um, but I work specifically for our Juneau campus, which is our main campus for the University of Alaska Southeast. So, if I can, I'm going to share my screen. Hopefully you can all see that. Uh, I'm also going to turn off my camera. Okay, so my contact information is right here on this first page. Um, I'm gonna push through pretty quick because we're only supposed to use six minutes of your time here. And this could easily take me 60 minutes if I was going through it at the pace I prefer. So bear with me, I have my contact information here. Um, I will receive all of your contact information to follow up this um, virtual fair as well. So let's see. Um, if you're not aware, we're down here in Southeast Alaska. Um, Juneau is considered a bigger city for the state of Alaska. We have about 30,000 people that live there. Um, but at our actual Juneau campus, we have about 1,000 students who physically attend. So we're the smallest campus in the University of Alaska system. Um, we're located on Clinkett land in the Tongass National Rainforest, surrounded by glaciers and ice fields, lakes. Um, we're right on the ocean, on the wetlands. We have more hike, hiking trails than we have roads. Um, and because of our location, we have lots of those really great place-based programs like marine biology, environmental science um, that we're really known for. And this is our mascot here, Spike the Whale. Um, this is by no means a full list of all the degree programs we offer. I just like to talk through them to show that we have lots of different options, everything from occupational endorsements, which will take you a semester to complete from certificate programs that take you about two to three semesters, and then some of those associate and bachelor's degrees as well. Um, the really great thing about the University of Alaska Southeast, where I did actually get my undergrad degree from, um, is that we're such a small close-knit campus. All of your resources feel like your aunties and uncles on campus. You know everyone on a first name basis. It's an extremely walkable campus. Um, the same people that you see when you're out paddle boarding on the lake, which is right on campus, um, you're gonna see again in your classrooms, in the library, in the Native and Rural Student Center. Um, so my biggest thing here is that it's really easy to utilize those resources. So right, you're coming from Colorado, you're somewhere new, maybe it feels unfamiliar, but it's really easy to get comfortable and feel like family on a small campus of a thousand students versus something larger than that. So on average, your class sizes are about 10 to 12 students apiece. Uh, my smallest class at UAS was actually four students. So me, three others and the professor. And I feel like the biggest perk of that is just being able to get all of your questions answered, work closely with your professor. They know you and your academic skills, where you might be struggling, where you might be thriving. Um, and it was the best learning experience for me personally. Um, lots of other really great things that happen to ensure that you have a great time. College is about furthering your opportunities, getting that dream job, um, building your resume, making those connections, but it's also about having a good time, making friends, um, definitely a huge outdoor campus with all kinds of events that happen throughout the year and tons of toys to play with outside too. So our rec center is super great because it's the nicest gym floor in all of Juneau, but we also have tons of outdoor equipment like paddle boards and mountain bikes and cross country skis that you can rent out from our rec center, big promoters and playing outside. Um, we have incredible, incredible student housing and we also have housing scholarships, which is pretty great. 
Uh, this, these pictures here are of John Pugh Hall, which is our freshman residence hall. So by no means do you have to live on student housing, although I recommend it. I lived on student housing all of the years I was going to school at UAS. Um, I even li lived there for a year as staff in residence. It's really, really nice student housing. And so this picture here, the big one with the silhouettes, that's actually your view from the freshman residence hall. You can see the top of the Mendenhall Glacier. You can see Mount McGinnis. And then that brown building, you can see it between the silhouettes is where your main campus is, where all of your classrooms are, where the library is, where our learning center is, if you need help um, with any math homework, if you want to um, get a biology tutor, anything like that, it's literally right next door to you. The cafeteria is right behind that, and right behind the cafeteria is Auk Lake, so you are in walking distance of food, of hiking trails, of your classrooms, of the library, of the tutor center. Um, so pretty nice student housing. It's set up suite style so that you have this common space that already has a full-size refrigerator in it, a microwave in it, a double sink bathroom, your own shower. And then if you decide to stay on student housing afterwards, you have the option between Banfield Hall, which is set up suite style again, um, or the apartments, which is set up like an actual apartment, four bedrooms or two bedrooms, totally furnished, living room and kitchen, dining room area, double sink bathroom, your own shower, closet space in the rooms. Um, and then just quickly, because I know I'm going as fast as I possibly can here and I'm already running out of time, just want to talk about the cost of attendance. Um, this is based on a typical first time freshman taking 30 credits, so about five classes per semester for the entire year. So $23,410 for tuition fees, room board, books and supplies, if you bought all of your books and supplies at the bookstore and not online where it's more affordable, um, $23,410 for the entire year. And the University of Alaska system all has the same scholarship deadline, um, February 15th. So if you do decide to apply to one of our campuses, then you will have access to our scholarship application. And it's just one general application for a huge, huge pool of scholarships. Um, so that's alaska.academicworks.com. I said we have housing scholarships available too. So the Chancellor's Housing Award is a GPA scholarship and the Alaska Leadership Initiative is a secondary application. And I see my screen popping up. So I'm gonna say I'm done with this now. Here's some links here. You can look at our Instagram. You can visit our campus. If you feel like flying to Juno, we are offering in-person tours. Check out our website or just send me an email if you have additional questions. Okay, that was really fast. I went over one minute, sorry. <laughs> Thanks so much. Uh, next up is the University of Alaska Anchorage. All right. Hello, y'all. My name is Fernando. I'm with UAA. Just one second. All right. So again, my name is Fernando. I'm Assistant Director for Student Recruitment at UAA. Um, so I'll be presenting a little bit over us today. Um, UAA is located in Anchorage. It's right there on the on the map. So we are actually the largest city in the state of Alaska. Our population is approximately 300,000 people. Um, so we have a good mix of, we like to call it kind of urban wild is kind of the way we put it, where um, you have you know, all the amenities of you know, a pretty large city um, while still being so close to a lot of really great, well, it'd be trails, over a hundred miles of trails in our municipality, um, biking, really a lot of really great outdoor adventures. I mean, if you look at our campus in the previous picture, uh, the mountains are right there. <laughs> They're not really far away. Um, but then along with that, uh, for our actual campus though, we have nearly 11,000 students on campus. Um, so again, a little bit larger, uh, still maintain a 15 to one student faculty ratio. So a lot of those class sizes are still gonna be pretty small. Uh, you might have like a larger, you know, intro bio course or something that's, you know, 50, 60 students. But after you get into your major, you're going to start experiencing those much smaller class sizes. Uh, you've also recently been ranked number one return on long term investment among our peer institutions by the Central on Education and Workforce. So our students are coming back and saying, oh, I have, you know, uh, it's really paid off long term for me. So I think that's a really great thing for our students. Um, a little bit about student life, athletics, and a few other things. So uh, we have over 100 different student clubs on campus. Uh, our student government is super active. Um, you see them uh, having all sorts of events. Uh, you see some of their former former members there on the bottom right doing one of our uh, US, US UAA student government events. Uh, we have both Division One and two sp sports, depending on which sport. And also a really awesome internationally ranked debate team that's also really accessible. Even if you've never done debate before, they still kind of let you uh, practice with them and kind of get your public speaking skills um, a little bit more polished, I would say. 
Uh, some areas of academic interest. So I don't, I don't have time to go through all of them. So I'll just highlight two of them for now, just to kind of get, you know, give you a good idea of some of these. Um, so those will be engineering. I really love highlighting them because, well, one, Alaska really needs more engineers. They're always in high demand here. Um, and of the last two cohorts for our engineering program, uh, we've actually had a 100% placement rate for them. 74% uh, of them even had a job offer before even graduating. And 30% of them had three or more job offers. Uh, so you can kind of see that demand that they are getting those very high paying jobs straight out of college right away. Uh, and then also health science and professions. So we're talking, you know, like nursing, those sorts of things. Uh, we're even say going on, you know, to medical school eventually. Um, um, that our location for that is fantastic. We're actually located literally right across the street from the largest hospital in the state of Alaska. So our students have really great access to those sorts of like internships or experiences just right there. You don't have to go very far. Our residence halls are actually a little bit, a little bit closer to the hospital than they are to the campus. Um, so that's also a really great thing. But even for any of our other majors, we really do value experiential learning. So you'll see in you know some of these pictures, you know, on the top right, a lot of our students, those are like bio or bio students going out there and really experiencing you know the great Alaska outdoors but actually seeing what's out there not just reading about it in a book so a bit more experiential then about cost and affordability again y'all would be paying the tuition on the left so as our wooey tuition that all students from your region would qualify for in Colorado um, so about just a, a tiny hair underneath ten thousand dollars in terms of tuition and fees again that estimate of books and supplies is if you buy them all brand new I probably wouldn't uh, you know buy some online save a little bit of money I don't tell anyone I told you that but at least no one that I work with uh, and then also room board um, which I'll go into in just a second to kind of explain that as well so again about twenty three thousand dollars so very similar to our other uh, our peers here in Alaska um, and again all admitted students qualify for what we tuition you don't need to do anything extra and there are actually a few ways you may qualify for in-state tuition including if you are um you know uh, either in the military planning on being in the military or a dependent as well as a few other ways also really great ways to experience a new place so we have study abroad opportunities as well as a semester away with national student exchange where you can exchange to over 100 different institutions throughout the united states you can even study back home in colorado for a semester if you'd like to um, while still paying uh, either our tuition or even colorado in-state tuition uh, so you might even save a little bit of money that way while still visiting home first for us a little bit though a lot of our students for that actually go out to hawaii so i guess they like the warm weather down there then also for res life, uh, we have a few different housing options. So again, suite style, it's one flat cost, regardless of where you're living. Uh, one thing I really love is that every single one of our students gets your own private bedroom. You do still have to share with your suite mates, your bathroom and with, um, so you have three suite mates, uh, one right next to you and two on the other side uh, of the room and you share that living space, but you only share your bathroom with your suite mate to your um, right or left, um, which is again, very nice private. You get your own little room, uh, which is really fantastic. And it's really close to campus, only about a five minute walk away. Um, and with that, uh, just our last thing that I'll say, uh, we have some really great green and gold visit dates. So they are virtual. If you go to uaa.alaska.edu slash visit, you can set up a virtual tour uh, or a full virtual visit. Um, or actually, if you're planning on sometime coming up here, we are doing in-person tours as well. And also feel free to apply that we don't have an application fee. So it's completely free. It just takes about 15 minutes to complete and you're good to go. With that, I'll pass it back on to our facilitator. Excellent. Thank you very much. Uh, next up is the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Hello. Sorry about that. Um, hello. Um, thank you for being here. I'm Jessica Armstrong. I am the admissions counselor for UAF eCampus, and I am excited to tell you about what makes UAF so unique and to welcome you to Nanak Nation. So hopefully you'll get to come up and visit us on campus. Um, we have, that way you could see our community and, and our campus. Um, but if you aren't able to, we do have um, a virtual tour that we offer and you can see that um, at our Office of Admissions, their website, and then you can just go to visit campus and you'll see our virtual information sessions and information about the Fairbanks area and our virtual tour. 
So UAF is Alaska's flagship university. We were founded in 1917, and uh, we have a 10 to 1 student faculty ratio, which means that students have a lot of opportunities to not only get to know the faculty, but also their fellow students, because you tend to kind of work through your classes as a group. And so that's really nice, because you have a lot of opportunities to get hands-on experiences. And then, of course, we have the in-state tuition for military veterans and their families as well, similar to UAA. So a little bit about our student body. The Fairbanks campus itself has about 5,300 students. But if you look at all of the UAF campuses, including like our e-campus and our rural campuses, we're just under 7,500 students. And for context, the entire Fairbanks area is about 90,000 students. So it's still small enough that people will hold doors for each other and stop if you're broken down on the side of the road. But it's big enough that we have the box stores and some of the other bigger city experiences. We do get we have students um, on campus from 48 states. Um, our top states are um, Fairbanks, Washington, California, Florida, Texas, but we have a lot of students from Colorado. It's actually where I'm from. I did my uh, associate's degree at Red Rocks Community College in Lakewood, and then I transferred up here to do my bachelor's degree. And so, and I and I stayed. <laughs> um, but we do have a very uh, diverse population. We pride ourselves in that. We try to be a very welcoming community. We are the 12th most diverse flagship university in the country. And we're very happy about that. Um, we do offer uh, over 140 different degrees and certificates, and we kind of have something for everyone from the semester year long occupational endorsements all the way up through PhD programs at our different schools and colleges. Some of our more unique majors would include like Alaska Native Studies, Fire Science, Security and Emergency Management, but we also have really strong traditional programs like engineering, biological sciences, business administration, psychology, wildlife biology. Those are some of the programs that we might be a little bit more known for. So we do have 45 fully online degrees and certificate programs. So some students choose to complete a degree without ever coming to campus. And some students choose to just take a few classes um, and then move up to Fairbanks or kind of do a mix. You will pay in-state tuition for any e-campus class you take. So no matter where you're physically located, so that can be a great way to save some money too on tuition. So other reasons to choose UAF. We are America's Arctic University. We're a world leader in climate change and Arctic research. There's a ton of opportunities for students get, to get involved in some of that research. And we receive over $100 million in research funding annually. We're Alaska's only land, sea, and space grant university. And so there's just, like I said, just a lot of opportunities for both the cultural side of it and the harder sciences like biology and natural resources and that sort of thing. So one of the reasons I chose UAF when I was looking for somewhere to do my bachelor's degree is because it does offer the full college experience. Students can live on campus and go to the library and all those sorts of things, um, but we're only 200 miles from the Arctic Circle. So that you have an opportunity to have some really fun experiences while you're here, such as being crazy and um, taking your picture when it's 45 below outside in your bikini. People do that, it's, it's a thing um, for Fairbanks folks. And of course, there's a lot of opportunities, just like UAA, UAS. We have lots of student clubs and organizations, lots of opportunities for students to get outside because part of what everyone here wants is for you to get out and explore Alaska and fall in love with it like we have. Um, of course, we have the NCAA sports and music and, and all of those sorts of opportunities too for students. As Colorado residents, you guys will be eligible for the WUI scholarship. And so to, to receive this, just check yes on your application and you'll get the WUI tuition rate, um, which can save you a lot of money over the out-of-state rate. About two thirds of UAF students receive grants or scholarships for, um, during their first year. And we have a financial aid office here who's ready to help you put together your financial aid package and figure out how to pay for college. Applications are open right now for fall of 2022. Um, and as, as um, Danielle mentioned, we all share the same deadline. So there's the foundation scholarship deadline of February 15th. But then if you want to be considered for our admission scholarships, you would need to apply by June 15th. And we're waiving the SAT and ACT through summer 2025. There's an application fee waiver here, uh, code that you can use UAF virtual 2021 to save the application fee. 
And with that, here's my contact information. Like I said, I'm a proud, proud alum. I'm from Colorado, um, and I've been, at, but I've been at UAF since 2003. I've worked here since 2013, so. I can help you with any questions you have about UAF or the Fairbanks area, and um, please visit us virtually. You can see our um, virtual address there and follow us on Instagram. And thank you so much for listening today and welcome to Nanak Nation. Excellent, thank you very much. And next up is Alaska Pacific University. Okay. Hi, everyone. Uh, good evening. My name is Campbell. I am an admissions counselor for Alaska Pacific University. I was on campus and then recently just transitioned to be a regional counselor and am in the lower 48 recruiting students down here now. So I'm excited to tell you a little bit more about Alaska Pacific University um, and what we're all about. So we honor Alaska's indigenous heritage and exemplify excellence and prepare paths. That is our mission. A little bit of history. We once were called Alaska Methodist University in 1960 when we first opened our doors and later became Alaska Pacific University and expanded and now have um, many more options as far as programs and opportunities within the university. Um, we're committed to the heritage of Alaska Native education. So if you experience coming up to Alaska, whether it's to come onto campus, um, to get to come and take a vacation with your family, you will get to see and learn a lot about the culture and heritage of um, Alaska and the natives. We offer rigorous academics and we want to support students, whether that's through our counseling services, through our tutoring office, our writing center, um, or our disability services. We want you to be successful and um, graduate and be ready for your career. Um, and we also have a second campus called Kellogg Farms in Palmer, Alaska, which is just about an hour away. We have about 530 to 550 students currently. We have four different housing options, actually three different housing options, excuse me. We have our traditional dorm style, which is called Atwood. Um, we have a, an apartment style called Seagull Horse, which is a full apartment. And then we have a house style, duplex style house called University Village, where um, that is a fully furnished um, house and you live with about three to four other roommates. 78% of our students are coming from within the state, state of Alaska. However, we represent students from 31 states and countries outside of Alaska. So you will get to know students from all over. Um, our student body president right now is Grace. She is from the Midwest. And we have a lot of students coming from states like Colorado, Montana, Washington, a lot of those states that have mountains and nearby yeah, um, the water. We have an eight to one student to professor ratio. So it's very hands-on. You'll get to know people really well and it's um, a very tight-knit community, community. And as I mentioned, we are an Alaska Native American Indian serving campus. The views in Alaska, obviously, um, the, a lot of the other universities you've heard from today have mentioned this, but the views are breathtaking. This is a view from campus. So you're kind of in a bowl, just surrounded by mountains on all side. Um, we are also located in Anchorage. So um, we are the within the largest city. However, APU is kind of up on a hill. We're tucked back and we're in a quieter area. So you kind of get that small town feel in a way and get uh, out of the hub of the city. There's adventure all around, um, hiking, backpacking, skiing, kayaking, you name it. A lot of rich history, a lot of wildlife, moose and bears that you'll see around campus. Um, and we, I mentioned that last point. We are a place-based experiential learning campus. So we want you to experience uh, your program, whether it's through an internship or clinicals and just get that hand, hands-on experience right away. We wanna focus on you as a student and on um, getting you out into the community and focusing on the community. We have 12 undergraduate programs, which I will talk about in the next slide. We support and respect you. We support you as a student. You'll get the support from your advisors, from your professors, from other students. 
Um, and you will learn a lot of things that and keep things within your program relevant to Alaska, the history, the demographics of this state, um, the ecosystems around you, all of that. So these are the programs. Um, I won't go over them too much, but our biggest programs currently are nursing, counseling, psychology, marine environmental sciences, which includes marine biology um, and outdoor studies. So there's a lot of programs. They are, uh, a lot of these are offered as a master, some and some leading into a doctorate as well. And a lot of them overlap as minors that you can pursue. Uh, this is a picture of on campus. I always like to mention that. This is a moose that just walked onto campus one day and started um, munching on the produce from a farmer's market that we have on campus. Uh, life on campus though, we talked a little bit about the dorms on campus, the meal plan options, um, are a great way to eat on campus. We have a dining hall as well as our coffee cart um, where you can get uh, grab and go items, a latte, um, and the meal plan options are wonderful. Um, we have on campus and off campus events, everything from um, weekly hikes, movie nights, game nights, karaoke, um, paddle boarding in the pool, going rock climbing, and we also have a Nordic ski team, um, and that's a, a very popular activity in the winters. Um, and then we have a rock wall indoors and an indoor pool where you have open climb and open swim. The admissions process, you'll submit an application. We have a $25 application fee. However, you can get that fee waived if you need, just reach out to us. We have, you'll submit your official high school transcript and we look for at least a 2.5 or higher. Um, you'll get to be in touch with us in admissions then and work with us through the whole process. And we would absolutely love to have you come visit whether that's in person or through our virtual visit. Um, I'm going to speed through this because I'm sure I'm getting close to being out of time. Our tuition is the same inside as out of state. It's $20,000 per year. Um, and then you get scholarships um, automatically upon getting accepted, a merit base based on your, um, your GPA, anywhere from $1,500 to $7,000, as well as you will receive an out of state discount being from Colorado of $1,000. And then, of course, we want to encourage you to apply for the FAFSA and then other scholarships opportunity that we can provide for you. So we'd love to have you here. If you have questions, reach out to us or you can go follow us on social media at apu.admissions. Thank you. Excellent, thanks very much. Um, thank you to all of our presenters. We now have some time for Q&A. Um, so I'd like to invite all of our presenters to come back on camera and respond to this question. What advice would you give someone going through the college search process? And we'll start with uh, our first presenter, uh, University of Alaska Southeast. Um, I think that the biggest piece of advice while you're going through the college search process that I personally have is just thinking about the right fit for you personally. I think I made the mistake when I was looking um, for colleges, it was like, I'm actually from rural Alaska, a really small village out in the Aleutian chain, which is actually where I'm calling from right now. I have a really awful setup at a back room at the school that no one's using. Um, but I just wanted to go somewhere that none, none of my friends had gone to. I'm like, I'm going to get out of Alaska. I'm going to go to Washington because no one's done that from here yet. Um, but that wasn't the right move at all. I found out that that was too expensive. I never thought about those things like what's going to be the right fit, what's going to be affordable, where will I be happy. For me personally, I needed to be somewhere small where I felt significant that I knew I would make a difference and I needed to be on the water. So even if it's about climate, even if it's about size, even if it's about, you know, it, especially about programs, if you know what you want to do, what you want to be, it's just about finding the right fit for you personally. And that doesn't just have to be because of a major, it could be because of anything. Yeah, so I'd probably say definitely, you know, look beyond just what's near you. I mean, certainly a lot of really great in-state options down there in Colorado, but really great out-of-state opportunities as well, uh, both here in Alaska with many of us um, or even in other states as well. Um, really great to know that there's places that, you know, can be really affordable. Um, you know, there may be some good scholarships, just kind of check them out, do some research and see where, you know, see where you end up, see where's your best fit. I would say don't get too caught up with picking your major because a lot of students change their major. So I think that the fit advice that Daniel had is excellent. Like find somewhere that speaks to you for, for whatever reason and go with that instead of being so worried about, I have to know my major going into it because so many students change. 
Uh, I think one thing that I wish I would have done when I was looking at college was asking questions. Um, if you don't know something, don't be afraid to ask. Um, that's what us in admissions are here for. We want to be able to help provide you with information, whether it's um, getting you in touch with financial aid, connecting with you with a faculty member that can more in depth tell you about your program, um, or just coming on campus and walking around with somebody to get a better feel for if it's the right fit for you. Awesome. Um, so our next question is, what's one thing you want students to remember about your school? We'll go in the same order. Okay, um, I feel like that's such a tough question to answer. I'll just tell you what I found most important at UIS. The best part of UIS for me was just the community. It's small and close knit. And I am originally from a really small village. So maybe that doesn't resonate with everyone here if you're from bigger schools. But I think the one thing I want you to remember about UIS is that everyone's family, um, you're among a pool of like a thousand students physically attending our campus. I, you know, one thing I really like about UIA is definitely, I would say the resources. Um, yes, I know, obviously, I, I, I love school, small schools as well. And they have fantastic, you know, one on one, um, like attention for everybody. Um, but then also, you know, large schools can also have a lot of very different resources for students. Um, so you can easily go between one major and another, um, which many students do. Um, so I would say, you know, definitely compare and contrast any of our institutions um, and you'll find really great things either way. I would say for UAF, we're a very welcoming community and students just have a lot of opportunities to get involved with research, get involved with hands-on experiences, meet folks that they might know for the rest of their lives. Again, it comes down to community and, and um, what you want to much want around you. But um, getting involved in faculty research, if you're at all interested in the sciences or engineering, is going to be really valuable. Um, I obviously would say some uh, similar along the lines of community. Our community is just a really tight-knit community, um, being that we are just about 500 to 550 students. Um, it is very small. Your class sizes will be small. Um, one opportunity that we also have for students that is a really unique experience is something called Expedition Alaska. This is right in the beginning of the fall semester, and this is for new students. It's a, a week-long uh, backcountry tri trip where you go rafting on the Yukon River. Um, you take a class and you learn all sorts of things from wilderness survival, um, how to cook your own meals, um, everything you need to know about the, uh, the, about the outdoors, excuse me, um, and then you actually get to go with a group of 10 to 15 students and some faculty members and staff and just really build those relationships, get to know students, um, be sleeping in tents with people. Um, so yeah, it's just a great opportunity. Awesome. So I have one more question before we wrap up, uh, and that is what on the college admission process? Um, so I mostly work with our rural students, and I think that um, in rural Alaska, which might be a lot different from where you all are all calling in from, there's this idea that if you don't know like exactly what you want to do and exact, exactly what you want to be, then you should wait to go to college, wait to figure it out, don't waste your time. And I think that that is never good advice for students. Um, I was someone who had absolutely no idea what I wanted to do. I've been a commercial fisherman my entire life, um, but every winter I went to school. And so it's like, that's what I'm gonna do now. And everyone would ask, well, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna be? And because I didn't have the answer to that, um, I was a student who changed my major over and over again, but if I could have just applied as undeclared and figured it out somewhere along the way, I think I would have been in a better spot. So even if you are someone who has no idea what the heck you wanna do or what you wanna be, there are so many incredible options out there and um, so many doors and opportunities are waiting. Some that you don't even know exist yet, right? I had no intentions of being an admissions counselor. Um, I couldn't be here without that opportunity that UAS gave me and I absolutely love it. And I couldn't have been here without kind of just putting myself out there and figuring it out somewhere along the way. Could you repeat the question one more time? Sorry, I think it broke up right when you said it. So I missed uh, it. One a myth about the college admission process that you'd like to debunk. Oh, sure thing. 
Um, yeah, I, I think really I'd go back down to affordability, uh, whether it be people think that out of state schools are unaffordable or even private schools are, you know, they think those are unaffordable. They really can be really affordable. Um, so just really talk to your admissions counselors, um, ask them about scholarships, um, ways that can really help make it a lot more affordable for you. Um, and yeah, just don't really write off any institution just because of what, you know, this, the sticker price really ask and see what the actual cost of attendance would be for you. Kind of along that same line is ask all the questions that you have. There's no stupid questions. We're here to help guide you through the process. Even if you don't know how to ask it, go ahead and ask and we'll try to help you figure out what you need to know. Um, we're, we're here to guide you. I also, not to repeat again, but was also just going to mention the fact about financial aid, um, being that Alaska Pacific is a um, private institution, I think that sometimes can stare, scare students away and thinking that they can't afford that, um, or it's not attainable for them and their families, but um, our tuition is just 20000 that of course is not including the room and board fees, however, with those fees, it's not um, too bad compared to a lot of private universities, and we do have a lot of scholarship opportunities, um, some that are automatic upon getting admitted and some that you can apply for and receive and our financial aid office is more than willing to work with you. Excellent. Thank you all so much. Um, so that takes us to the end of this session. Um, so I want to say thank you to our panelists for all the great information that you shared. Thank you to our attendees for joining us. Um, when you close this window, there will be a link to a quick survey. We do appreciate your feedback. Um, and just a reminder that you'll be able to find a recording from this session as well as others um, at strivescan.com slash greater Denver. Thank you all so much and have a great rest of your day.